OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here on this lovely afternoon. Um, my session is called Building an OER Project and Team. My name is Diana Vera Alba. I'm an OTAN subject matter expert. I'm also the ESL and OER coordinator at my district, San Diego College of Continuing Education. So a little bit about myself. I've been an online instructor and teacher trainer since 2012. I have taught in the modalities of distance education, hybrid, high flex, and fully online courses. I'm also an OER and CAEP coordinator at my district. Um, I train on Canvas course design, online. I'm also an online faculty mentor, OER and ZTC trainer, and an OTAN SME. In my free time, I enjoy gardening, photography, and I'm a dog enthusiast. So you'll see some pictures here of some of my pets. So we, before we get started, I'd like to find out how familiar or how comfortable you are with building project teams at your district. So just any type of project team. So if you are not familiar, please type one in chat. If you are somewhat familiar building project teams at your district, type two. And if you are very familiar with project teams at your district, type two number three. So if you could please vote in chat. Thank you. Okay, great. All right, so we have a mix. So thank you for voting. That kind of helps me either um, stay a little bit longer on some of the topics or, or move on. Um, but I will certainly ask you as we get to some of those places. Thank you, Jeff. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with our agenda. So today I'm going to go over three main points. Um, the first one is building an OER project team. That's our overall topic. And specifically, we're going to look at um, having an OER coordinator or resource teacher lead some of those projects, um, getting uh, at least one, if not more, of these project team members Creative Commons licensed. So I'm gonna go over that, what that means and where you can get that um, done. We're gonna look at committees, work groups and meetups. Those are three distinct type of groups that could be working on these projects. We're also gonna look at funding your OER projects through strategic planning and grants. And then finally, we're going to look at or organizing your OER projects. Okay, so let's get started with building the team and the resource teacher. Um, so you want to have at least one subject matter expert, if not more. And as your project is developing, um, you might start off with only one um, subject matter expert in OERs, but as your project is developing and the participants are learning, you're instinctively going to create um, several OER subject matter experts. Okay. And that's really important because if you're just starting with OERs, like at our district, we were just starting with OERs, it was just me. And now, um, as the year, the two years that I've had this role, um, now we have several OER subject matter experts, which is great, really helpful for me, really helpful for our institution. Um, so regarding those subject matter experts, um, part of their expertise is going to be becoming very familiar with Creative Commons licensing. It's going to be a really important part of the project. Um, so there is a Creative Commons certificate program. And it offers in-depth course on CC licensing, open practices, and uh, sharing in our 
global, because this is a global community of OER uh, experts. And you'll see um, many of the benefits of that. There are lots of benefits of sharing out um, and you're literally sharing out with the world, okay, through digital commons. Um, the courses are led by expert instructors and are highly interactive, including readings, quizzes, discussions, and practical exercises to develop open skills, okay? So when we say open, we're talking about open educational resources. Uh, so the Creative Commons Certificate offers three different tracks. So there's a certificate for educators, which would be a teacher, um, a coordinator, or a resource expert at your district. Um, there's also a certificate for academic librarians. So if you are fortunate enough to have a uh, designated librarian at your district, that works in your uh, adult education or continuing education organization, you can also um, get them certified. And then the last is in Open Culture GLAM certificate, and this would be for galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. So most of us would fall under the first certificate, which is Certificate for Educators. Um, and the courses do vary on a 10 week self paced course or a one week boot camp. I attended the one week boot camp, which is 10 weeks condensed into one week, and it is very, very intense, but I do highly recommend it. Um, I, I preferred doing the face to face, which is the one week boot camp versus the online 10 week self paced. Um, I do have a colleague um, at our district who's a librarian and she followed the 10 week self paced. And she said she would have really, really liked to be in person for some of those topics because they are pretty intense. Um, probably the most intense is the um, copyright section. Um, because it is taught by a copyright attorney. And so um, I had the benefit of having the copyright attorney in person, and we were able to ask um, the, the attorney questions that we had. And, and it was very, very um, informative, um, highly recommend it. All right, so now that you have your licensed OER coordinator resource teacher, um, this person can uh, would be an ideal candidate to lead the OER project and team. Um, they can also create monthly reports or newsletters to keep your entire faculty up to date. Um, so that's another important aspect of this is when you are creating this team um, or your OER project or your team or combination of both, you want to make sure that your all of your constituents are um, are being updated on what's happening, because that's going to drive the incentive of people going, ooh, what is that? I want to do that, you know, because eventually you're going to have to recruit others, right? So keeping everyone up to date on the latest on OERs and perhaps having office hours um, or um, PD peppered throughout your, uh, uh, your semester, um, that is a great incentive to get people motivated to, um, to see what OERs are and, and get interested in them. I'm going to show you, um, so you'll see throughout the slides, which I will share at the end, there are links. So I'm going to show you an, an example of one of my um, monthly reports. So at my site, we um, I belong to Academic Senate. We have a um, Academic Senate. And um, I always have to report out every month in Academic Senate 
I also report out to different committees. So we have, for example, we have a distance education committee. We have a distance education work group. So whenever I can attend those meetings, I do report out. Um, so this is an example of what I report out. So I give them information about PD. So this is actually my May report. Um, so I gave them information about the PD that I've been doing for OTAN. I also give them links to other, um, this is a link to a survey that our district is um, sends out every semester. And then I give them um, information about other open educational resources. So this is through State Academic Senate. It's, it's an organization that I also belong to. Um, and even if your organization does not have uh, an academic senate, state, you can still belong um, and participate in State Academic Senate professional development. Um, they have a whole entire division devoted to open educational resources. It's called the OERI, the Open Educational Resources Initiative. And so I let our faculty know about the latest that is happening. Can you, the, can you increase the size of that? I have it on full sure. screen. And it's tiny, tiny. Thank you. Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you for letting me know. Yes. Um, so this organization, again, it's called um, OERI. Um, they also send out a monthly newsletter and that newsletter is full of um, the latest in OER and zero textbook cost initiatives throughout the state. This um, resource, which you can sign up uh, for to receive at your institution is also also includes um, grant opportunities and this is where I've um, found and, and searched for uh, grant opportunities for my district. Um, and this is just an example of some of the events. Um, so they um, they promote conferences. So there's a conference coming up in August. Um, they'll have different professional development. And then within this professional development, you learn about free resources. So for example, I learned about H5P and now my district um, H5P is a great um, if you use Canvas or a learning management system, it's a great tool to add on to your uh, learning management system. And within H5P through uh, State Academic Senate, they have created lots of open educational resources. So you can download them into your LMS. Um, and um, so anyways, you learn about not only the training on the software or uh, the initiative, but you also get a lot of tips on um, other free resources that you can bring into your district. Okay, so that's just an example. I give my, um, there are lots more of these within the newsletter that's linked here, um, but I give my faculty a taste of what is in there. So kind of incentivize them to open up that link. Um, and then I give a report on um, other committees within our district that are providing um, open educational resources. So it's just a, a plethora of links. Um, sometimes this um, newsletter or my report can get a little bit long, but there are lots and lots of resources in there for our faculty. So I just wanted to share that as an example of what a OER coordinator or resource teacher can provide for their um, district. And then um, they can also provide professional development. So this is another thing that I do besides professional development for OTAN. I also do professional development for our faculty. Um, I have uh, open education office hours, um, usually once a month. Um, initially at the beginning of the semester, I have them every week because it's at the beginning of the semester and teachers um, may uh, find it that they are looking for additional resources for their courses. 
Um, so at the beginning of the semester, I do that on a weekly basis. And then um, the other thing I wanted to provide, if you do not have a coordinator at your district or a resource teacher at your district that um, specifically um, works on OERs, I have a sample OER coordinator job description here. And we'll give that a second to open up. And so this is the um, sample um, for my district and it includes the responsibilities, the qualifications that they are looking for for this type of um, position. So that is there, but it, you can always Google OER coordinator job descriptions. There are quite a few out there, but I just wanted to share out ours at, the, at my district. So another, um, another description or activity that the um, OER coordinator or resource teacher can provide is coordination of the actual project. Um, Oops, sorry, I didn't click. Um, oh, coordinator of the project and responsible, they can be responsible for an OER library at your institution that's going to become really important. Um, many, um, many districts either have this type of uh, resource in on their website. Um, so at my district, we do have an OER uh, website or a section in our website for OERs, but I wanted to provide our faculty with more than just what was on our website. And so what I did is I created an Canvas account, uh, Canvas account with OER uh, resources. So um, you can look at most colleges and universities offer something like this um, in a simplified manner. Um, some, some are a little bit more extensive than others. Um, there's usually a lot of links to other resources, maybe videos, maybe some recorded professional development. Um, and again, what I do is I provide um, these resources in a Canvas account because that's the LMS that is being used at my district. And in, at my district, it serves both as a repository, which is where there are actual lessons and books. So a repository is like a library. It houses lessons, books, resources. And it can also be a referatory where, where I refer out to other repositories that faculty can search for OERs. So mine is a combination of both. Um, it can house an OER course for teachers um, where they can actually learn about OERs. Um, it can be maintained by your campus OER coordinator, which is what one of the things that I, one of my responsibilities, or a resource teacher or the actual team, right? That can be one of the projects for the team because uh, once you do create something like this, whether it's on your website or in your LMS, it will have to be maintained and updated, okay? So that's uh, also something to consider uh, regarding the uh, responsibilities for the coordinator or for the project team. Sorry about that. Okay, there we go. And so again, you can look at the college university websites for um, more ideas. So most college and university websites, um, if you do a search within their website, you'll find a section for OERs. Um, and then on my uh, Canvas account, I organize the materials by discipline. So we have materials for um, ESL, high school subjects, our health department, our emeritus department. So I organized it by our different departments and then I um, included OERs for our faculty. So this has been a lot of work and this is also um, something that a, pro uh, a whole team on the project can work on. Um, and then 
Um, also, I have sections for OER topics such as getting their Creative Commons licenses, um, how to attribute work, the types of materials um, are that are included on the site um, are also books, images, artwork, other repositories. Um, so I'll show you um, my example in just uh, a few slides. And then, um, so on the site, this is um, this is what I have. So I created it on a Canvas account, but I have also seen them created on Google Sites, and they um, work really nice in Google Sites. Um, you can use design software like Canva, H5P. At my district, I have a little asterisk here. We use City Labs Design Plus, which is a paid software. It's not a free software, um, but you'll get to see what that looks like. Um, and then the repositories, as a repository, you can add relevant OER sources to your site, like lessons, books, resources, training modules, OER videos. And then as a referatory, you can refer out to other great um, OER sites like OER Commons, Merlot, BC Campus, Common Lit. There are lots of great ones out there that you can refer out to. Okay, so again, ideas for your OER project team. And I'm going to share my OER site with you. Um, it's if you have access to Canvas, it's already on the Canvas Commons. All you have to do is go to Canvas Commons and search for my name. You'll see this card, um, and this is what the card looks like. So you'll know it's my um, OER site. It's called OER for SDCCD, which is my um, district, but it's open to all. I did license this OER site, CC by NCSA. So that means that you can use this for non-commercial purposes. So you can't make a profit off of it. And if you do um, use it, I ask that you use the same license, which is CC by NCSA. That's what the share alike is. And that share alike means that you can use it with attribution. You can adapt it, you can change it, you can only keep part of it if, if you don't uh, want to use the whole thing, but you do have to license it with the same license that I'm using, okay? All right. Um, and then part of the um, creating this project or team is deciding what type of team you want, um, whether you want a committee, a work group, or simply a meetup, okay? And they are pretty distinct. So a committee is usually more formal. Um, usually there are bylaws, agendas, and minutes. So it's very um, organized in that sense. Um, typically a committee is a closed membership and members are appointed either by the committee lead or a director or a principal at your institution. And this type of uh, group is a fa uh, fact-finding group. So projects are proposed and may be new, okay? And there's typically one or more subject matter expert in this type of committee or group. The second type of group would be a work group. And typically a work group is open to all who want to contribute or be part of the work group. Um, it's more action and solution based. Um, there are deliverables uh, and de they deliver outcomes proposed by the team or another committee or a director. And again, they usually have one or more subject matter experts. Okay. And the last type of group that you may want to consider is a meetup. And a meetup is um, the least formal of the three. Uh, it's typically a, a space where people can share ideas. Uh, the participants in this type of group are already doing the work. So they're, maybe they're already using OERs. And they're uh, usually, um, there are many subject matter experts within the group. Okay, so I see this as a potential of 
a combination of all three, right? Especially if you're starting off new, you might have, uh, might consider a combination of all three. Um, or if you start with one, it might evolve into uh, one of the other or all three, right? Um, so like I mentioned, it's a progression. And if you are just starting at your district with this type of committee or this type of group, um, you will eventually end up with lots of these, right? Lots of subject matter experts because the people working in the group end up becoming subject matter experts, um, whether it's for their department or their discipline, okay? So this is just some ideas. At my district, we're kind of a combination of a committee and a work group. And again, because of the progression, we have lots of subject matter experts within the work group. All right, so here we go. Funding for your project. This is probably um, something that usually attracts most, but you really want to consider um, your group. Um, that's why I started off with the with a group or with a OER uh, coordinator, um, because that does need to be um, thought about. Um, but funding for your projects. So you definitely want to start with strategic planning, because before you can apply for grants or monies, you already want to have a plan in place, right? Just like um, all other types of um, grants and, and um, asking for money within your district. So strategic planning is really important. Um, it can be part of your accreditation plan, um, and it should be part of your accreditation plan because if, especially if you're going this direction, because um, we, we all know that they are looking for innovation, right? Um, when those teams come and to your district and look at your plan and OER uh, and ZTC are an important part of that. Um, it can be part of your tech plan as well or your Triple E framework, right? So OERs can fall under several different types of uh, strategic planning. So once you have these um, goals in your plan, um, then you can start looking at grants. So you can use WIOA dollars that can be uh, written as part of your goals uh, and strategies to increase student enrollment, student completion, student persistence, right? Um, there's a great organization called Mitchelson 20 MM. So we're going to look at their website and they have a grant called a Spark Grant. Um, it's a great organization. They do a lot of um, funding, a lot of philanthropy work. Um, so let's take a look at Spark. So the Mitchelson Spark uh, Grant, um, there was, Unfortunately, just an informational webinar, um, but all the information that you need is on their website. So I did attend the webinar. Um, we just got a little bit more insight, um, but again, they added a recording, I believe, to their site and also the information that they went over with us last week um, is on their website as well. So this is a grant that opens next week. Um, and it's open from May 30th through June 13th, so very timely. Um, so let's take a look at the informational webinar. Info Oops, sorry. The informational webinar for you is here. So if you missed that date, you can definitely watch the video. So we're not going to watch it here. Um, but you can look at some of the resources here. So. Um, there are two steps to this grant. The first step is writing your letter of interest, and that's what's going to be due within these dates, May 30th through June 13th. <clears throat> they have copies of past letters of interest because we did request that. Um, so those of us that attended, we asked if they would add that, so they did. Um, and then if your letter of interest is accepted, then they will invite you to fill out the full application. 
Um, so if you watch the webinar information, they'll explain that process to you. So you don't want to go to the full application yet. You want to start off with the letter of interest, okay? And what they're looking for is innovation within um, a district. Um, they are not looking at this moment to fund um, grants that are OER producing, but OER related. So if you watch the video, they go into detail of what that means. And this grant is um, an ask up to $25,000, okay? And here um, uh, you'll see some information here on what they're looking for. So for this grant, they're not looking to fund primarily um, grants that are seeking to develop OER, um, but they are that should be OER related, okay? And there's information here about the funding cycle and what they're looking for. Okay, so if you are interested in applying for this, I highly recommend that you watch that webinar. It's only 50 minutes. It wasn't super long, but it was full of information and great questions from um, everyone that was there. So if you scroll down, they go through the process of how to apply for this grant, which I've explained a little bit of, of it, but you definitely want to make sure that you um, <clears throat> that you go through this. Um, here is the grant committee. When you watch the video, Kaylin um, was um, there. She's a great, great resource, and she has opened herself for questions. So. Um, Make sure you take advantage of that. And then you can look at their past recipients from the last cycle from 2019, okay? So this is um, something that's very timely right now. Um, if you're interested, um, make sure you check out the Mitchelson Spark Grant, okay? Any questions so far? Okay. All right. Um, the other type of funding, and this is um, some of the funding that we received at my district, is local funding. And um, local funding can include reaching out to your local state representatives or congressmen or congresswoman. I'm going to show you some information. Um, I have the link here. We won't go through all of it, but you can definitely look at um, the link. This is the website at my district, and it's linking to um, one of the grants that we received. So this past year in 2022, we were awarded $975,000 um, to provide, to expand our OER and ZTC resources for our students. Um, this is a really good article and it will give you ideas on um, what your local uh, in constituents are looking for or your local representatives are looking for as far as um, OERs and, and um, requests for monies for OERs. Okay, so that is there. And what we did with those funds. Um, I'm currently part of a project right now where we're revising OERs. Um, and so my district has distributed those monies, um, not in a one time thing, but they're going to distribute it over a couple years. Um, so there's going to be grant opportunities that faculty can apply for every semester. So I applied for the first semester. Um, and I'm currently working on revising uh, with a team, currently working on revising an existing OER book. Um, and so we did apply for the second 
for the second year and we didn't receive it, but I completely understand why it's a lot of work. Um, so if you're interested in finding out how to distribute monies, I highly recommend that you don't do it in one shot because it really, really is a lot of work for faculty. Um, so it's, it, I really liked the way that our district divided the grant. And it also gives others opportunities. It's not the same people um, constantly um, receiving those grant dollars, okay? Any questions so far? Okay, all right. All right, so organizing your OER projects. So one of the many ways that you can get buy-in is by providing incentives, right? So many of your faculty may already be doing this work or at least exploring the possibility of writing and producing OERs. So providing faculty with financial incentives through grants or existing funding earmarked for student resources, um, for creating new OERs or revising existing OERs to meet the needs of your student population. So to avoid duplication of effort, you can also assign projects by discipline or subject matter or types of deliverables like books, modules, lessons, videos. Um, so there's a plethora of different types of materials. But as you're thinking about this project, I think it's really important that you decide on the type of assignment of projects uh, to avoid this duplication of efforts. And then you want to think about timelines. So you'll need to establish timelines for completion of these projects. Otherwise, they will have a very long tail. Um, so most projects are completed within one to two semesters. And I can tell you, we for my project, it's a revision of a book. And we are taking the full two semesters plus summer um, because it is a lot of work. Um, I have a sample here attached of my OER team. Um, we have a continuous planning Google Doc that my team can refer back to on some of the items. And um, you'll notice that in the sample, there's a lot of repetition because we do have to, um, you know, just like any project, you have an idea and then um, you try to move forward with that idea and you realize, oops, I missed a step here. We need to go into further detail on this other topic. So you'll see some of that in our sample there. So let's take a look at that. Um, so, so that we're not duplicating efforts. What I did, um, because I am the project lead on this, I created a continuous document so that, and, and I created a Google Drive that we are all sharing. Um, so I created this continuous document. At the very top, I have the resources with links of what we are using so that um, we're not scrambling where did we you know, save this and where's this at. So we have this continuous document of what we're um, working on. And, um, and then I have our meetings. So we meet on Zoom and I do record the meeting. So you won't see the meeting link here, um, but it's just to give you an idea of how to organize this. Um, and then there's details about I usually have an agenda, so this is for, um, actually that, that, was, that was supposed to be for our next meeting. But anyways, I start off with an agenda and I start adding items and everybody else can add items to the agenda as well. And then we just, um, I'm usually the, the note taker, so I'll type my notes. We decided that the new stuff was gonna be in purple, you know, just for our organizational purposes but you can decide um, you know, on a color or the way you organize it. Um, so we've gone through this um, several times. This is our table of contents for the book and we're changing 
um, even the table of contents and adding things on there. We've assigned who is taking lead on those units. Um, again, we're revising um, a book. And so um, you'll see that there's been a lot of organization, <laughs> a lot of links um, that we're adding um, for our purposes of going back and working on this project. Okay, so we started this project at the beginning of spring. Um, we did some review and our notes for the review are in here. Um, so that was really helpful to all of us to see each other's notes, excuse me. <laughs> um, but you'll see that there's, there's probably about six of us right now working on this. So um, that's a good size team. You don't wanna have something too big or too small. Um, if there are not enough participants in the team, then it's, it's a lot of burden on, on those that are working on it. Um, so um, you can decide how many, but um, yeah, in our team for a revision of a book, we have about six people working on it and they all had different roles. There are four writers and then we have two, um, two people in our group that are helping with um, the maybe bringing in um, OER pictures or open pictures and then creating the attributions for them. So the writers are not doing everything. The writers are writing and then someone else is in charge of the attributions. At the um, As we finish each unit, someone is in charge of accessibility and making sure that everything is accessible. So um, that's how we decided to break up our our team um, so that the writers are just writing. Um, so that is the um, ideas for a timeline. And then our timelines are also listed in there. So you can take a look at those, <laughs> excuse me. And then the deliverables. So you have to decide how or what is going to be part of this project deliverable. So initially we had these big ideas and we said we were going to create a book, we were going to create lessons and a workbook to go with it, a teacher's guide, and we were going to create Canvas modules all in two semesters. And as we started, we realized that was impossible. That was um, a lot of work for that short timeline. Excuse me just a moment. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so we decided as a team to only create the book, create the book with the teacher's guide. Um, someone else can take our book and create lessons, right? That can be another project. And then another project could be taking our book and creating Canvas modules from it. Okay, so all of these that we thought were going to be one project um, can end up being three separate projects because it's that much work. So once you decide what the deliverables are going to be, where will your resources be housed, right? So these are intended to be open educational resources and open means easily available to not only faculty, but students, right, as well. And the perhaps the open community, uh, worldwide open community, right? So you wanna think about where will these deliverables be housed? Uh, so some of the places that they can be housed are in your LMS, right? You can um, house these uh, resources in your Canvas account. You can share them in Canvas Commons. And if you share them out in Canvas Commons, you can share them either with just with only your district or anyone who has access to Canvas. Um, you can share them on your website. And if you share them on your website, then they're open to all that, that know your website. Um, but you can also share them with the OER community, which would be even a larger community, right? It's a worldwide community. So some of these great 
uh, organizations like OER Commons and Merlot, and there are others, I'm just listing a couple here, but these types of repositories are open to anyone in the world, right? You don't have to have a membership uh, to uh, access OER Commons or Merlot. Um, however, if you house them in your Canvas account and only share them with your district, then they will not be available to everyone at large. And you might want to consider sharing them out with everyone because that might be one of the requirements of the grant, right? So if you're asking for grant dollars, if you're using federal funds, um, the idea is that we're not all reinventing the wheel um, and you are sharing them out with others, okay? Any questions about that? So far, we're good? All right. Um, when you do share them out with others or when you create your own, um, it could one of the projects could be for your team not only to create um, OERs, but also to curate them and house them uh, so that your faculty has access to them, right? Um, so I mentioned earlier here, State Academic Senate, um, which is ASCCC. And ASCCC OERI um, has their own version of grants that many community colleges received. The, many community colleges received millions of dollars within the last year um, to develop new OERs. So I have a list here, a link out to OERs by discipline. So let me show that to you. So if your group is thinking of a project and they, they might want to revise an OER, um, an existing OER book, this might be a place where um, you can look at what is available out there. So um, these resources were created by um, community college and university districts. Um, so this is a great place for us in adult education or continuing education to look at the resources that are there and perhaps rewrite them to um, meet the needs of our students. Because again, these, are, uh, these were created by credit colleges. So I teach in ESL. So I can go to the link here for ESL and I can look to see what was recently created through, um, uh, through the grants received by the community colleges and universities. So if there's something that I like here, um, I, maybe I'm looking for um, ESL writing and I take a look at it and I think, wow, this is great, but it's very high level for my students, I can take this book or parts of this book and rewrite it. And that can be a project for um, your project team. Okay, so there's lots of ways of doing this. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, but again, a lot of the recent, uh, you'll notice if you're searching for OERs, a lot of the recent uh, OERs that have been written have been written for a higher level that um, I know that I teach in continuing ed, and I know that some of these might be uh, a little bit higher level than my students can handle, but I can always modify them because they are OERs, okay? And you'll see the license here, like this one is CC BY, so it's one of the most open licenses. I can definitely revise this. Um, all of these are going to I don't believe any of these are going to have the ND. The ND means non-derivatives, means you cannot change it. So due to the funding that these colleges and universities received, um, one of the stipulations is, was that it was a revise, that you can review or revise the materials. Um, so most of these, um, or all of these should not have the ND. Um, on there, so you can definitely um, revise them. This is um, this is one that I use, and this one as well. So I've personally revised um, this one 
um, for my students. I haven't officially written the book, but um, I've revised some Canvas modules based on this book for my students. So there are lots of materials on here. Um, if you see BC, British Columbia, they do a lot of adult ed level um, uh, OERs. So um, I highly recommend them as well. And Tim Krause is a great, great author. He's He has some great, great resources. I'm gonna share, actually share um, some of his resources with you at the end of the presentation. All right, um, let's see. Okay, so, oops, let me go back. I think I went a little too far. Okay, here we are. All right, so those are the OERs by discipline. I have some uh, samples here as well. And these all appear in the OER by discipline. As you saw, it's listed in alphabetical order. So lots and lots of topics for adult education, CTE. Um, so you'll, you'll definitely um, see a lot of that. And again, those materials that are here on this list were written um, less than a year ago. So they're brand new uh, materials. So where else can your group or project group find OERs? So Canvas Commons um, has lots and lots of resources. Um, some of the newer materials are being added to Canvas Commons that we saw in the previous slide. Um, but in Canvas Commons, you can find full courses, modules, single lessons, lectures, slides, assessments, quizzes, and more. <laughs> So if you see something in there with the um, CC license, uh, especially CC BY, you know, you can definitely revise or you can adopt those materials. Okay, but those are, that's another area where your project team can look at. Um, so some of the benefits of uh, Canvas Commons is that you, if you're using Canvas as an LMS, you can directly download those materials into your Canvas course, okay? Um, you can search by discipline, you can search by name. I've added several resources in Canvas Commons. Um, so has Monica Cueva, um, who's one of our, uh, who is our technology coordinator at my district. She's a great, great uh, resource as well. And I have a link here for you um, if you don't know how to import or view these resources in Canvas Commons. There's a link here um, for uh, on how to do that. Okay, so OER Commons is a great resource as well for your project team. It's a basically a giant digital library, which is called a repository of open educational resources. Um, so this can be another area where your project team can look for resources to either adopt or add to your digital, your own digital library, or um, use as a project to revise. Okay. Um, OER is, o Commons is open. You don't have to have an account, but if you do create a free account, you can store all the resources that you like and you have found on their cloud so that you're not taking up space in your computer or on your um, Google Drive or something like that. Um, and then also, if you do create resources, OER resources, you can add them to OER Commons, okay? They have this um, video on how to use their uh, open author. That's the name of their template. So if you do uh, create resources, you can add your resource by using their open author template, okay? Um, so, I have some resources here for you. I, earlier, I talked about Creative Commons certification. Um, so Creative Commons has this certificate program um, and the link is here. Um, so the certificate program um, offers an in-depth course on the Creative Commons licenses. 
open practices and how to train your faculty on using these types of uh, licenses. Um, courses are comprised of readings, quizzes, discussions, practical exercises to develop your open skills. They provide personal engagement with expert facilitators. Again, I had the access to that copyright lawyer. Um, and because I am certified now with Creative Commons, um, the copyright lawyer is available to us. Um, I believe it's like the third Friday of every month. So um, lots and lots of uh, resources through uh, Creative Commons certification. Um, typically, if you do go to one of the boot camps, it is a one to 25 ratio. We had two facilitators in, in my program. I just went through this past January and there were about 20 of us that participated. So um, it was a great, great ratio for us. Um, Creative Commons also has an open education platform. And this is a space for open education advocates and practitioners to identify, plan, and coordinate multinational open education content, practices, policy activities to foster a better sharing of knowledge. So once you, if you haven't already um, started with um, open educational resources or gone to professional development. Once you do attend professional development, um, it's really exciting because everyone is there to share. Everyone wants to share their information. They provide a lot of resources for you. So um, it's a great place for sharing, uh, sharing your own resources and receiving content from others. Um, so um, I highly recommend also belonging to their platform. And then Creative Commons has trainings. So besides their certificate program, they all also offer other learning and training opportunities uh, to support the global community in developing open educational resource expertise. So I love attending their presentations. They are very professionally done, and um, I always get a lot out of them. Okay, so these are these are linked out to the different parts of Creative Commons and their certification programs. I also have some other tools here for you. Um, so if you're just new at getting into open educational resources, or you want to provide resources and links to your faculty. I have some information here. Again, the Creative Commons licensing. Um, and then once um, your faculty is wanting to create OERs, you would definitely want to um, add the licensing to those OERs. And there's a great chooser that Creative Commons has created, um, easy to use chooser here. Um, there's also an open Washington attribution builder for those that are already more um, advanced in understanding the licenses. They can use a attribution. This attribution builder is a great resource. It's also open. Um, and then Many of those repositories have their own remixers, and these remixers are really helpful if you're new to revising OERs. So let's say you found two books, your uh, your project, uh, project team decided they found two or three books that they really liked, and they want to take bits and pieces of those books to create a new OER book. Um, LibreText, Merlot, and OER Commons all have these remixing tools to make that process a lot smoother, um, a lot easier for you. Um, again, there's lots and lots of OER PD opportunities. Creative Commons has some uh, great uh, resources here for, um, there's also a great training on open for anti-racism, which is also inclusive, uh, included in lots of trainings now. We want to be inclusive of everyone. And so there's lots of training and support for uh, anti-racism as well. 
I've included a resource uh, toolkit that was shared with me at one of these trainings that I attended, one of the professional developments that I attended. Um, when you click on this link, um, it'll prompt you to create your own copy. This is a great toolkit. I've shared it several times, but um, I can't emphasize how wonderful this toolkit is. Um, so um, please check that out as well. Um, there are lots and lots of new um, open educational sites that are um, DEI, um, DEI that promote DEI. Um, so uh, lots of these sites have um, images, for example, if you want to use for your presentations of people of color, uh, disabled um, individuals. Um, so again, what I like about this is it's representative of who our students are. So whenever I'm looking at images, live images to add, I want to be inclusive and feel help my students feel included. So there are some sites here that, um, that um, follow that inclusion. Um, there are also other sites that I added here for icons, um, Pixabay and Unsplash. Many of us use these already, but many of these sites are um, also being very inclusive um, in their um, projects. I've also included some videos here that will help you get started on attributions, um, Creative Commons licensing, and what those are. Okay, and here's a video that I created that's on there as well. Um, and any questions? I know I went over a lot of resources, but any questions? Yes, Iskami is great. Thank you, who shared that? JG, thank you. <laughs> yes, Iskami is a great, great uh, resource. They have a, a great conference. I think it's like every two years, but it's a great, great uh, conference as well. Um, so thank you for sharing that. I'm going to go ahead and add that. Um, any other questions, comments? I know I went through some of these rather quickly. <clears throat> any questions? I have a question. Um, yes. So you mentioned a Canvas site. Is there a link to the site? To um... Oh, yes. Yes. So let me go back. Um, so if you go to Canvas Commons and you search for my name, um, let me, let's just do that search together. So this is it, but I want to show you how to get to it. So if you're in if you log into your Canvas account, so Jacqueline, do you already use Canvas? I don't use Canvas for this. I have Canvas for something else. Right. Okay. But you have access to Canvas Commons, right? Yeah, um, I think so. Um, okay. Yeah. So when you log into Canvas, look at your global navigation bar here in the far left. So you should see Commons. So you're going to click on Commons. And okay. you're going to, in the search, you're going to type my name, Diana Vera Alba, okay? Okay. So there's my name. And the resource page that I created is this one here, OER for okay. SDCCD, okay? okay? So when you click on it, it's going to look a little bit different than when you download it. So what I want to show okay. you what it looks like when you download it. So um, this is everything that's in there. So I have modules, um, page, lots of pages within the modules, but it's at least organized. Um, you'll see the organization here, okay? The way it's being uh -huh. organized. Let okay. me show you what it looks like once you download it, or it'll be similar to this. So let me just give it a second because this is and the what Canvas be. Commons I get through OTAN, right? The well, if you if you already you already have access to Canvas or you don't? 
Um, I don't have access, not to this canvas. I have access to an entirely different one. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, you don't need to go through OTAN. If you oh, already okay. have access to Canvas uh -huh. and you and you see Canvas Commons, then you will be able to download what I'm going to show you. Okay. Yes, you do, if you already as long as you already have access to Canvas. If okay. you when you don't have access to Canvas, then your district uh -huh. can um, inquire about Canvas through OTAN. But it okay. has to be your your entire dis or your the entire district. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Okay. Or your program, your adult education program. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, so once you download it, um, this is what you'll see. You'll you'll have the home page. Um, I believe the video transfers over. If it didn't transfer over, I can give you access to the video. Um, but you'll have some resources. These are buttons to access the different parts of the Canvas account. But you can also access them here in modules on the left here. Um, so I have some coordinator resources here. Um, I have, um, so I do have them subcategorized, right? And then I have Creative Commons licensing information here. I have attribution information, finding and using OERs. And then um, I have some repository information. So these also have cat uh, subcategories. So these are images and artwork. The ones that are starred are the ones that I frequently use because I was asked which one do I, which which ones do I frequently use so I have starred them here. Um, then I have large repositories, and then a section for open access books. Okay, so all of the materials in here are open resources, and then under the repositories I have OER by discipline. So um, again, I created this for my faculty at my district. So you may or may not use some of these uh, or have some of these disciplines, but um, I ha do have them in alphabetical order. So I have child development, emeritus, um, ESL, and within each of these subcategories, I have um, the different types of courses that we teach. So let's say you're looking, uh, you're interested in looking at ESL resources that are reading resources. So then you would click here. And within that page, I have lots of resources. Um, so I'll have the title of the book. For example, this is a book and the link to the digital book, um, the type of license this book has, um, some information about that resource. And then um, this resource happens to have a student book and a teacher's edition book. And this is actually um, the book that my team is revising because this is a book that I use for my reading uh, ESL reading class. So there will soon be another copy of this book. <laughs> um, but there are more resources here. So each section has um, the resource, the license, the links out to the digital version of those resources. Okay, so again, this is something that I created for our faculty at my district. Um, I shared it out to the commons. So if you want to revise a version of this for your own purposes, um, at least there's a shell already out there for you to take a look at how to organize um, something like this. Um, when I created this, I didn't have a template. <laughs> so it took, I didn't have a Canvas template, but what I did is I went out to the different repositories. I searched through different um, community college and university sites to see how they they organized their materials. Um, so if you're interested in how I, the nitty gritty of how I went through this, please feel free to um, contact me and I'd be happy to um, help you out with that as well. Any other questions? Mm -mm. Let's see. 
Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> yes, Christy, it was a huge project. And believe it or not, I did it all in one semester, but my shell was all done in one semester. Um, but of course, I have been adding and revising and adding. And I'm so excited that next year, um, I've already recruited some people to help me out with it because it's a lot of work. Because something like that, whether it's on a website or Google Sites, or, you know, this can also be created on Google Sites. Once you create something like this, you have to maintain it, right? You have to make sure those links are working. Um, thank goodness Canvas has um, some resources. So I'm glad I did it on Canvas <laughs> because there are resources where I can check links, but it is a lot, a lot of work. Um, so I'm glad that uh, I already have a team that's um, going to help on me. On paper, yeah. Yeah. So um, um, any other Next week, I questions? don't know. I'll check. Oops, see. Jackie, we can hear you. I think it's Jackie. Jacqueline. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that's okay. Any other questions that I can answer for you? All right. Well, thank you again. Thank you very much for being here. Um, I hope that this was helpful, at least to get you going on your OER projects and teams. Uh, and again, if you have any questions beyond this, please feel free to contact OTAN. Um, you can also contact me and um, I will be happy to help out. <laughs>